Hello, everyone, and welcome to Coffee with Martha. I'm joined here with female rights activist, Fiddlesticks, Jay Norris, and Schrodinger, Schrodinger's Jay. And to kick things off, I think Jordan was going to talk to us a little bit about artificial intelligence and automation. What, what you got, Jordan? Mm, yes, when? Well, let me, let me tell you. I have a study done by well it's not a particular study it's just a culmination of research uh mit researcher is doing and i'll explain like what they're doing and then i'll kind of like pass it on to jay so he can explain it's a little bit and then we can talk about this study but she's mainly studying our connection with robots and how that could play into our connection with artificial intelligence in the future and like the ethical implications that come from that um which is why i think it's pretty interesting because i don't know of anyone else really touching on that right now but her name is kate darling um and she's got her own lab at mit and she, i was i heard about this study she was doing with um uh, robotic dinosaurs that some researchers had developed and um she would get uh, a sample of people and introduce them to the robots or the dinosaurs and they would spend like an hour with the dinosaur right so they would even give it like clothes and stuff they could dress it up and be functioning robots so they're very lifelike even though they look like a dinosaur so they almost become like uh like what you would think of as a pet names and everything so they identify them and then an hour into all of this will like different like um i don't know if you call it tools or or whatnot but like hammers or a hacksaw and she tells the people to torture the dinosaurs and her research studies the reactions of the people and more often than not to torture the dinosaur even though it's an inanimate robotic object so uh i just found that interesting and i think it's pretty telling of like where our society is going and how so they found it difficult to torture the dinosaurs? yeah they weren't able to do it that's they pretty interesting able to do it. because on a less scientific level i just got one of those robotic vacuum cleaners and i kind of think of it as a person <laughs> That's unhealthy. Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> I've experienced the same thing with them. Um, I know somebody who has one, and it's my girlfriend. And uh, when I'm at her house, and that thing's going around, like you, they they even have a name for it. They call it Gizmo, and they talk about it as if it's like part of the yeah, family. Yeah, dude, mine went into the bathroom and shut the door. Like you needed some privacy got stuck in there and i had to like let him out so it's almost like having like a second pet for me yeah it's funny my boss was talking today we have robots at work that uh deliver trays to uh the people that actually give the food to uh our patients you know because i work at a hospital and uh the robot like no one was touching it or anything and it just randomly turned back into him that was probably one of the scariest things ever happened to him in this whole so <laughs> that's pretty interesting you know and we kind of joke eh, maybe it's self-aware you know <laughs> this has got a little computer chip in there and it's got like dialogue options and stuff they make it seem like a person and they gave, did give it a person's now it would be hilarious to kick it over so i don't know yeah, i'm losing you anyways Back to what Jordan was saying. Jordan was saying that if you make have like a cute little animal thing and it's a robot and you put someone in a room with it and you make it <clears throat> talk to it as if it's one of its cats, then we'll have a hard time torturing that. So let's make sure we don't do that so that uh, people don't get attached to robots. Yeah, I'd like to kind of expand on the uh, Jordan's topic of ethics and AI. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen that product google they didn't officially release it to the into the marketplace or anything but they tested it and showed it at one of their like product reveals where the google home assistant can call and make appointments for you but it sounds yeah, like it's a, yeah it sounds like it's a person talking and it can uh -huh. like 
understand the nuance of a con- like a conversation with a human. So like the people on the other end, they don't even know they're talking to a robot. And I know that raised some eth- question, ethical questions um, because, you know, if you're talking to a robot and you don't know it, you're going to, you know, ex- expend a lot more emotional energy into that conversation and you're going to kind of feel duped. So I know there were a lot of ethical questions around robots tricking people into thinking they're people. Yeah, and I think, too, going along with that is once the technology becomes more developed, like, secretarial work will be obsolete. Like, you, robots will just be able to do it. They've already taken over a lot of call centers. Like, a lot yeah. of, call, of telemarketer calling is now off. Yeah. Uh, it makes me think it's of... It's interesting. Um, that... uh that movie her uh with joaquin phoenix pretty much just the, the stories about a guy that develops a relationship with a computer essentially like a romantic relationship or too far away from that as like gross and as crazy as that sounds and going Already back there, to dude. the whole like not quite as as uh it's not quite as obscene as it's portrayed in the film in my opinion I've never seen the movie. Yeah. But not that I know of, but maybe. Well, I've seen some reports that the, the population in Japan. Have. I've seen some reports that the population in Japan is falling because guys prefer like mm-hmm. re- the relationships with technology over like going out and actually meeting girls. So, I mean, yeah. Yeah, that's I think a you're, big issue. Yeah. Great. Uh, I think it's getting there. It's just not out in the open right now, but. Like they're having a real hard time maintaining their population, and we're kind of headed that same way. If we look at the trends of our current youth, they use technology. Mm-hmm. I'd agree with so that you too. So you guys, I was just gonna ask. So you guys think it's wrong to um, going back to that central idea? You guys think it's wrong to kind of have sympathy towards a robot like do you find that to be a dangerous prospect yeah. or like how do you, do you interpret that yeah i don't i think it's dangerous in that it can be used by like companies or the government to kind of influence and um control people but i don't know if it's a, i don't know can you I, see I, a benefit by having that though like can you see a benefit to people to be in uh, compassion. I think you they I think you can see a benefit, but at the same time the benefit I think could be a negative. Well yeah. um develop an affinity to like a factory robot, it's a benefit because you're gonna be uh, more likely to take care of it. It's a negative True. when it comes time to bring in a more advanced thing and you resist the change because you're like attached to this other one. If you know, they want to replace the robot with an actual human and you don't want that to happen because you're attached to the robot. I think then it's negative. It's true. But do you think that has any ill effects on like the person who is developing an emotional relationship with, with a piece of machinery? I think it would depend on the person really. Cause I think, you know, it's like, uh, with pets and stuff, I think it could be the same thing where it helps people show empathy. Like, and there's some prisons where they have programs where they bring in um, puppies, mm. like that are going to be raised to be service dogs, and they let the prisoners be able to be in the program, but they let the prisoners raise the puppies and train them to be a service dog. And part of the benefit of that is that it teaches the prisoners how to be empathetic and emotional. So I think you could see the same thing with robots and see how you could use it for good. Yeah, that's interesting. I definitely see a benefit and I definitely see like a negative uh, implication. Like I just, the first thought was like, you know, how people sometimes like, I was thinking of uh, our dad and uh uh, when was that? Around Easter, he was on a jog and he got bit by a dog. Or just was kind of acting like, well, he did nothing wrong. You know, he was just trying to play with you or whatever. Mm. But I imagine like in a few years, like what if that's somebody 
Japanese robot. And it just goes <laughs> yeah. like that. Now, granted, these it things are probably... Like, yeah. I mean, I'm sure these things will be programmed and hardwired not to do that. But... But have you seen iRobot? Hey, if when something's programmed like that, the the flip side is is when it becomes defective, it's usually going to be something extreme uh, that could be very dangerous to humans. So, robot thing kind of scares me, but I do think it's kind of cool in a sense that like people show empathy towards these. Uh, I don't even know what these entities. I guess if you, you dress could, them up to look like it. a kitty cat, then yeah. But, but man, it, it is interesting because, of... like, think think of how it would revolutionize like a uh, therapy. It could again, it could be used in prisons to help people be empathetic. It could be used in parenting classes. Um, it could be used in a whole bunch of things to teach people mm -hmm. empathy. And it's not like the first time it's happened. You know, I I remember as a kid. Uh, what year would that have been? got to dust off the cobwebs it was years ago early 2000s remember tamagotchis back in the day and granted those weren't robots but the idea of taking care of your own virtual pet you know like you had empathy towards those things like they were awesome you know like you had to feed them let them sleep it was heartbreaking if it died so will we even get to this point though i never got one they were always sold out I've always thought that uh, in artificial intelligence. <laughs> okay, dude. I've always thought that artificial intelligence w would kind of be controlled by the government before it would ever get in the hands of people, and what would happen to humanity would be kind of um, based on what the government does with it. Well, artificial intelligence is. I mean, it is controlled a lot by the government. The government has obviously a lot of access to it, but it's also. I mean produced by these big companies so i mean theoretically it could get to a point where it's mass produced and you know forms of it's happening where forms of ai are being made available to the public i would say that ai in terms of practical use is typically controlled by the government but i would say there's a whole other uh, division of ai that's more for entertainment purposes and that's definitely left to the private sector and that's I guess we're talking more about the private sector here and more of like the entertainment type of aspect of AI. Mm -hmm. um, when we get about... into... Okay, so your dog's going to be programmed to be a dog and there's not going to be basis for it to receive software. Good. Uh, I mean, in my mind, like they could make like a universal animal and like you could program it like so one day you want it to be a dog so it can be a dog the next oh, day you want so it to be a lame. cat i want so my dog to be a dog man <laughs> i don't want to switch it back <laughs> and forth here's the thing is i, <laughs> think, I don't think anybody Christ. would i think uh jeff's got a point here i don't think anybody would prefer a robotic dog over an actual yeah i want i want a, the real thing i want the fur i want the slobber Right, but uh, in terms of cost, like the upfront cost, of course, of a robot is going to be uh, a lot more. But about like not having to feed it every day, not having to take it out on walks to poop, not worrying about its diet, it's no vet visits, things that come with owning and a dog. the longevity, more, which would be the biggest thing, in my think, opinion. Think a little more pre-apocalyptic utopian world. That. Yeah, that's what, I, that's what I think Jordan's mind is set on right now, is the pre-apocalyptic utopia. I just think you took all the fun out of having a dog. <laughs> <laughs> you see, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I, mean, I think, you know, yeah. just get the real thing. Well, ten years down the road, my robot will be eating your dogs. So. <laughs> well, that can't be allowed. And you say it will be cheaper, but what happens when the dog breaks? <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I don't know why that's so funny, but that's a good point. All right, so well, I don't that. you have to it's think if you're spending, too. let's say it's a, t let's say the robot's ten grand, a simple repair. What if my dog breaks and needs a simple repair? What will I do? Uh, 
event visit. Well, how, is how's it, it, like, how's it gonna it? move? Are there hydraulic <laughs> fluids to get the? Yeah, okay. I think I feel like we're getting move. a little I lost mean, in the technical aspects of this hypothetical I dog. Just, I think it's a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> I got to um, sign with Jeffrey. <laughs> trying to bring it back to more of the the, the emotional consequences of AI. Um, yeah, I agree that it could be. We have to throw this all, all the way back to where you guys were saying that it can be used to teach empathy. I think I would agree with that. Um, in the terms of being used as maybe like a compliment to actual human interaction, but I feel like you can't just entirely replace it with robots, um, or else you're going to end up with like an entire society of psychopaths. Mm -hmm. yeah, no, I, I agree I, with you. I think it's a like a supplement. Like I said, like even a therapy tool. You know, you could take a kid who's a a, a, big, a bully or a kid who is stealing things and doesn't really understand why it's wrong or whatever it is and he's having trouble connecting with humans you could introduce him uh, to some form of robot that to um, introduce him to aspects of humanity on a small level right yeah so, you know, like human pain and then once he understands human pain then you could introduce him to different emotions and then once he works through the robot then you could start introducing him to actual people we want them to be as human as possible. And you yeah. can imagine the the um, robot in her and how close that is to an actual human. And uh, I think the thing that people will end up wanting to program into them is the right for the robot to choose to do what it wants. Because they want to be chosen over other things. And I think that uh, they want to have a robot like in her, that's, um, you know, the super intelligent thing. But they don't want it to be nice to them all the time. That would just be, it's like not even a real thing, you know? They just, they want a real person. So they will program it to be as real of a person as it can be, and then it will just kill them. I'm just not sure we can get to the level of emotional nuance where we can make robots replicate, basically, a living human being. We do. I think that would be maybe a couple hundred years in the future, to be honest. No, with you. Like the, the most pressing threat right now in terms of AI is definitely just you have, you have in terms realize, of jobs. You have to yeah, realize that, that. Uh, that we went from flying sticks and paper to the moon <laughs> in 60 years. They're flying yeah. sticks and paper? <laughs> yeah, they were first planes. They were made out of sticks right and paper. Brothers. Jeffrey, you know the right brother. I think, I think we're entering an entire new Moore's law. Is new. Very... <laughs> I feel like we're entering an entirely new realm when we're we're talking about just like the mechanical and physical, like conquering that with technology, and then now we're going into like yeah. emotional relationship kind of things and trying yeah, to. Yeah, right, because that's venturing into the realm of I know it's with animals, but what's this called? Anthropomorphism or whatever. Do yeah. you guys think that robots will have a di Darwinistic yeah. attitude towards their own lives? I don't think they'll be self-conscious enough to have an attitude. I was yeah. going to say, I don't think robots can ever reach a state of consciousness. That's the Why problem. Because we can't replicate that with software. We don't even understand it ourselves. But yeah, we don't yeah. know where consciousness even comes from. <sighs> so if you, if you don't know where it comes from, how can you portray it in a, into a robot? I think that that's not... I don't think that's a sound way to... You, We could be very close to something that approximates consciousness. And could plus, be close. there's also the fact that... Well, what do you guys think of Neuralink? What do you guys think of Cortana on Halo? <laughs> 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 it's a pretty good replica of a human being, I gotta yeah. say. All right. Uh, what were you saying, Jay? Uh, dang it, Jeff. <laughs> what do you guys think of? Uh... Oh, Neuralink. I'm not sure what that is. Yeah, okay. you're gonna have Elon to Musk is that one. developing a chip that goes in your brain. Oh, okay. And it acts as a third, a tertiary cognition layer, so it's one step above your cortex. Basically, it's like Google, but your brain very low latency you know you want a question you got it in less than a second and you want to know the answer to a question you got it in less than a second and um it's horrifying we can download a person at that point 
If you could access all of the things that make a person who they are, you could download their limbic system. You could download their their uh, cortex. Mm. And then you could replicate that and, you know, you could put it in something that has giant guns and then it could just kill us all. But it doesn't sound like it, it doesn't sound like it's recording oh, yeah. the person's brain necessarily. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just like no, but you could, if yeah, you were directly connected happen. to it. If you were it directly like connected like to a medium that can be controlled if you were, by the brain. You were, directly. It's like plugging a hard drive into a computer and detecting all the things that make up the computer, you know? Mm. Oh, but I, I agree with what Wynn's saying though. Like I think you're giving it too much power and biologically like nobody's explained how they're gonna get uh, a chip a microchip hooked up to somebody's neurons and i just don't see that you happening can. i think there's yeah, they well, already I, do i think the difference is it's not like the brain just runs on computer code and you can like you know download the data from it it's exactly no what the chip does is it has the ability to stimulate certain pathways and it also has pathways of its own that the brain can interact with. Okay. That's and different. So That's... You can stimulate a, a, a group of neurons. Um, you know, if you ask this thing a question, you send a signal out. Your neurons send a signal through the wiring to the chip itself, and then it spits an answer back. Dude, that sounds like something that you're controlling with your brain, unless of something that's like reading well, but the thing and downloading. That... The, the processing ability, well, first of all, you could just implant something in a person's brain that would, you know, be able to scan all of the information within the brain. Mm -hmm. You could download someone's entire, um, you know, brain matter contents. Every mm -hmm. synapse and every neural pathway. And then I guess Explain you could explain how you download have... the content. What was so. that? Uh, that um, um, experiment where they were had people's brains hooked up to certain things while they were dreaming, and there it was projecting images of what they were dreaming about. Have you heard about that? Mm -mm. Um, I've heard of it, but I don't know much about it. I very distinctly remember a study where they had people that were sleeping. And hooked their brains up to software, and it was pro it had a library of stock footage that was pulling from to project images on a screen. That's, and it was projecting that's things baloney. like birds, and there was like the water on the sea and stuff like that. I Why think, is that? Think, I'm gonna I, Google uh, it right now for uh, fudging I, some articles here. I think uh, I think that scientists use a lot of this language like. The brain is like a computer and it stores files like you know memories like files i think they use that a lot just to help us understand it but it's all, all a lot more abstract than that so i don't think it's necessarily like something that we can just how you know so, though? hack into and access how is it different it's not like it's just a computer with files your brain isn't why not because Theory all they, is, all they can not... do yeah theoretically it is but all like they all they really it seems like all they really know is like Oh, like this part of the brain lights up when, you know, someone is telling us that they're thinking about this. That must exactly. be where that part of the brain is controlling something. And I think from what it sounds like you describing that um, that study, it sounds like so that you said they were pulling from stock footage. It sounds like they had footage ready and based on what part of the brain lit up, they just they played that that footage. Like if it was like a, you know, if their brain was in. You know, maybe a fear response, they'd play something a little bit rougher, or, you know, if it was more tranquil, then they'd play something like the, the ocean waves, like you were saying. I don't think, I think you have to have a, a deep understanding of uh, G before, like, well, think about could even how far are about. we from artificial general intelligence? How far are we from something that is able to. Uh, I mean, that's what makes us human, really. Isn't it our general intelligence? No, <laughs> it's not. Yeah. So I would but say I mean, it's our consciousness. Well, no, yeah. it's the, our degree of consciousness. Yes, that's what I'm. That's kind of what I'm saying. General intelligence is like this ability to be a thing that's aware of its existence and to be able to build upon and and reach out into the world and gather information. 
and uh, use it to solve problems. How the, far away are we from a machine that can do that? I don't know if a machine will ever come to that level, though. That's what I'm. That's I what I believe. Because we don't even know where consciousness comes from. It's not. From. We don't that's have to know where it comes from. How can you build it into a machine? How can you replicate it if you don't even well, know where it's Well, I came up with one, one theory, which was you could download someone's brain and then replicate it. I still don't think it would someone's work. Someone's brain. That's what I'm saying. you got to understand the biology before you can just pop a chip in and download someone's brain. So you don't believe that humans can create artificial consciousness? No. Uh, I don't no, know. I don't. I don't think so. Hey there. I hope you've been enjoying the podcast thus far. I'm the post-production version of Austin. I couldn't figure out a way to properly edit the audio into a decent transition for the next topic, so I'm just transitioning you now with my voice. We are moving on, and if you happen to want to listen to some of the audio that was cut out, check out our video titled, Audio Deemed Not Suitable for public consumption thank you this next topic will be yeah, sure to ruffle it. some next feathers. one do it all right so are you guys ready for this now i've been thinking about this a lot lately and i think i'll side with jay a little more on this topic but it has to do with artistic expression and society a lot of things are chalked up to just be art now i wanted to ask you guys an ethical standpoint, is there a line to be crossed, artistic expression, or should there be complete freedom in the arts? And I want to know your thoughts. And I'll bring up an example I was thinking of. Uh, and recently I saw, I don't know if you guys have ever seen um, the body issue. I think it's, uh, I, don't, I don't go looking yeah i don't <laughs> go looking through it but i saw a picture of it's pretty much a magazine dedicated to photographing athletes naked and i saw a picture of um the um the rock climber that uh climbed up el capitan with no ropes or anything uh i saw a picture of him climbing on a rock uh naked <laughs> idea of this um, this magazine is to show like uh, this is what their bodies are really like you know like this is this is it there's no clothes nothing attached like this is an athlete and i was just curious what so that's what kind of brought this thought up in my head so like what line do you guys think there is to be crossed and in, in the arts if any okay i think so i think the the body issue is an interesting one because I wouldn't necessarily call it art, but um, I think that one is interesting because it does. It is interesting to see how different athletes' bodies are built so differently based on like this how they've specialized their workouts or um, their focus. So, like with the rock climber, he probably had you know massive arms and a really strong, you know, core, whereas like a football player will be a lot you know bigger and a lot more powerful. So, I think it is interesting from that standpoint just to see how like the wide range. Um, of like bodies based on like how they how they use them and how they train them for the various sports they they act in, and I think there is a difference in what I would call like gratuitous gratuitous nudity, right? Where it's just nudity for the sake of nudity, and you know when you're trying to convey maybe emotion or you know something like that. I also, Good. I also, I I. Th I don't think there's like new like full nudity in the body issue. Correct. It's like they don't show your like butt. they make sure Yeah, they make sure to like that uh, like uh, <laughs> they're not like completely uh so which uh, I think helps make their case that it's not it's not supposed to be gratuitous. It's supposed to be more of like look at look at the difference, you know, different at, like different bodies different athletes have and how amazing it is. So you guys don't have a problem with it then? I, I think I probably I do. wouldn't call it art, necessarily. I have but, a problem with it, personally. Right. But I don't think it's needed. I don't think it's necessary. I think you can see 
their bodies and strength and and without having to (coughs) take naked pictures of them just put them in a weight room (laughs) and have them do work different workouts with each other you know uh Offensive lineman is going to be able to bench press a whole lot more than Alex Honnold, but Honnold's going to be able to do a whole lot more pull ups. Like, right. right. So, yeah. but what are you uh, getting at? That I was just going to say, Wynn kept saying, I don't consider that art. So, right. what are your reasons for not considering that art? That's what I'm saying. Because right now in our society, there's many who would consider that art along with a host of other things in that category. So what reasoning do you use to determine that that's not art? I I would, I don't know. I, my argument for it, it not being art is I guess it's just more of, and I'm, I'm not going to try and necessarily say that the two can't be the same. It's more of just like, I feel like an inner form of entertainment, kind of like, you know, mass produced for the people. Whereas I would feel, I mean, I could see you making the art, the argument for art, if you're if you're saying it kind of like from the, from the point of view I was talking about earlier, where it's like, wow, look at you know how different the human body is, and it's kind of like one work, right? You're looking at it as one piece of work where it's like just kind of a catalog and looking at a broad spectrum of athletes. Um, but I feel like for art, for something to be art, has to convey an idea or an emotion. You know, it has to be able to communicate that to. The observer. So yeah, just, I think, just creating something, I don't think makes does it. Have to art. be a specific emotion. Um. Yes, happiness. That's where it starts to get tough. <sighs> I think to be, I think for something to effectively communicate, you know, like you have to go in with a purpose. If you're going to effectively communicate something, like say, 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 I sit down to, you have, to have artistic intent. Right. Like. Kind of, yeah, I would say that. But like, say, say I sit down and I'm trying to write a poem, or I'm trying to write a song, and I'm, you know, I'm trying to tell a story or convey it, convey something, you know. Um, I don't know. It's really hard. hard it's hard because uh, you can write a poem that doesn't have any sort of uh, that could just be description, you know, solely description, and then yeah. the person who reads it feels about it differently maybe than you do true true but the way you i feel like you can kind of guide that guide that by the way you describe something as well yeah Uh, but i mean you don't have to and there's been a lot of incredible poems that have just been descriptions of scenery i think a lot of a lot of what yeah no that's true i agree and I think you, in in that way you can kind of convey the beauty of something, like if you're talking about scenery especially. Um, mm-hmm. And that, I think that'd be kind of where that would fall. The body issue might fall into is you know just com- conveying the beauty of the human body and you know how you know how many different you know forms it can take. But um, like especially when you're we're talking about things that are meant to convey an emotion or um, you know talk about like some sort of situation you know that that people would find themselves in i feel like a lot of times those are misinterpreted or you know and if it especially if like someone's not a good artist they get more even they can be even more misinterpreted because misinterpreted because you know it's just not effective communication of of the emotion or the idea there well, I don't think there's such a thing as a good artist. I would say there's such a thing as a popular artist, and I think that's, that's yeah, I a, don't think a big that difference. The, the degree to which your art resonates with everyone else defines how good, quote-unquote, of an artist you are. I think it speaks to your ability to communicate sure, through, but, through the medium that you're using. But maybe you don't really... It's not the point. I mean... Okay. So back to if there's moral art. Yeah. Let's think. I'd say that there's not, but I'm not going to partake in, but given my moral compass and my moral standards, there's certain art that I'm not going to uh, partake in or, uh, or listen to. Or That's whatever. what I thought originally this was going to be about. I thought it was going to be 
we were going to be saying, oh, it's not art because it's decadent, you know, which is what they've been saying. The older generation has been saying that about the younger generation since, you know, Greece. Yeah. And I don't think you can say like, oh, it's not art just because it doesn't fall in line with your morals. Um, because it's decadent. Uh, that's what I guess that's what I wanted to get at. Like, do you guys think that you can buy something as art or not be an art based uh, off I your don't... moral compass? Well, is does art? I don't think you can. Does art you... give value to that thing? that supersedes your morals or is it still wrong if it's considered art uh is there, could you rephrase that somehow like you're asking i just want to let me make sure so you're asking right. is it still art if it's immoral yeah exactly and i'm saying does that add some kind of special value to it if it is considered art because i would say that's just a classification of something it doesn't it doesn't have anything to do with its morals. No, oh, but I would say that it uh, it also has art kind of um, buys a, a sense of intent. People do think people do intentionally immoral things all the time, you know. Well, immoral to you though. No, like absolutely immoral. Like based but off of the absolute. Not standards. everybody believes in absolutes, though. So it's all. Not everyone believes in relative either. No, but morals are on an individualistic basis. And plus, if you try to suppress the uh, ugly side of art, it comes back with a vengeance. Because the decadence is just worse. It's just turned up. The, the next generation comes around and things are just way worse than they were in the previous. Yeah, I mean, I I think, I personally think there is a, definitely a, a moral boundary and one of the reasons I think that is because of um, art affects people, you know? Um, like with the Columbine shooting, I think that's one of the best examples the Eric Harris and the Dylan Klebold, like they were documented to have been playing extremely uh, violent video games, listening to dark music. Um, you have the Sandy Hook, Adam Lanza. He was documented to be huge into video games. You have all the, uh, the recent um, about serial killers. Um, one of the game. Um, uh, what's the one about Ted Bundy? Well, we uh, can't talk about people that have mental health. Wait, issues, what does that have to do with I mean? art? Because the movie's an art. The movie's oh, art. Okay. I, I, like, yeah. here's what I like the guy who... I see what you're saying. I would say that's the best there's argument. Like, for... And there's like a victim, like, there's one of the victim's families of like a, a girl he killed that was like 12 years old and like they're coming out and saying like how the movie outrages him how they're de depicting you know ted bundy as like this attractive person and just kind of you know degrading the death of their family member mm -hmm. um by almost idolizing this serial killer 50 years later mm -hmm. so i do that I, I think that's a good argument for why there should be moral boundaries in art okay yeah, i, I still i don't i wouldn't say argument. that i wouldn't i'd i'd agree with that there should be moral boundaries in art I don't think that necessarily disqualifies it as art because, you know, it's I don't still... like it. Yeah, it's, I still consider it art. Yeah. Art, I think I would there is that. a danger to be had, though, in not disqualifying certain things as art, though. And the best example I can give for that, and, and I don't remember the specific court case, but it was when they were trying to get pornography legalized. And mm. the prosecution was brilliant because um, I think the majority of people thought that. Oh, this isn't going to be legal. But what they did was they said, "Have you ever gone to an art exhibit?" And um, I forget who was on the stand. And they they said, "Yeah." And have you seen nude pictures of people at those exhibits? And they said, "Yeah." And they said, "Well, do you consider that art?" And they said, "Yeah." And then they asked the question, "Then why don't you consider these nude pictures as art?" And they were stunned. They didn't know what to say. 
And that kind of spawned this whole movement. I think mainly the pornography industry, this whole movement in our country that all things and that's, has no moral boundary. Yeah, that's an interesting thing because that's a well-being argument. You're saying yeah. that um, art should be defined as being good art if it promotes the well-being of humanity. Because um, that's what pornography is, is um, this horrible, it's this horrible decline in humanity. So being against that, um, it's just, you want to promote the art that pushes us forward morally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you, I mean, you have to have morals like art can't change your morals, you know. <clears throat> yeah, so I I can see, but I do think that if you try to just suppress it, it your morals are going to come out one way or the other whether it's in art or in politics just, or whatever. I mean, just to clarify, when you say art can't change your morals, do you mean art shouldn't be able to change your morals or it, it physically cannot change your morals? Yeah, I'm saying it can't. Like art can't do anything See, I to think my it could heart. Be very oh, I think it can change your morals. I absolutely think yeah, it could influence that. that. You listened, I said you listened to enough uh, music. I mean, I, I think a great, I mean, this is all theoretical, so, but I think a great example is um, oh, the objectification of women within uh, hip hop culture. Mm -hmm. I, think <laughs> I, I said i mentioned nothing about race but if in my opinion if you listen to enough songs to where women are objectified you're eventually going to see women as objects yeah it starts to change can, the way you think but in we can keep this in pornography and the same thing reference with those studies in the in the 80s where they were show where men were showed pic, shown pictures porn, pornographic pictures and men were not, and the men who were women. They did what? They in their out. speech. They were they less... Out there. Uh, we can even take this back to uh, pornography. <laughs> and the men who... Uh, with the studies in the 80s, where they showed men pornographic pictures, and, the, and they had a con control group, and the men who were shown the pornographic pictures were not as kind towards women and were more violent in their speech towards women mm -hmm. they, started, I, they viewed them more as object afterward mm -hmm. i would say though that a lot of that is we're naturally geared men are naturally geared towards that idea of objectifying women visually so but i would say that your morals are just intensified work. yeah yeah i would say it's intensified but it doesn't change it it doesn't cause it to cease you're just less, you objectify them less Ooh. or more. You can't really cause any sort of. Well, it's with a, that's, it starts with yeah. desensitizing people. And once you become desensitized to something, that's when you're subject to having your morals changed. And that's yeah. often what. So, yeah. not like overnight, all of a sudden you're like, oh, I suddenly don't believe this anymore. You start to become very Rational sensitive thing. to it. Yeah, it's a very gradual gradient. And I absolutely think art has the power to do that. And right now in our society, I think that anything can be art, especially in this postmodernist age. Uh, just it, about anything. Especially with defined as art. But I think have. that's dangerous. Yeah. And the culture is increasingly defining certain things that we might say are. Uh ridiculous as being more valuable than they ought to be you give an example of one of those things like the huge rock sitting outside of one of those art museums 20 million dollars you guys heard yeah. about that i think it's the museum oh. there's a museum in la it's an art museum and there's a rock that's sta standing out front and there's nothing special about it it's just a rock and it's worth 20 million dollars <laughs> and i think as the, if the culture accepts less and less complexity to art 
that's incredibly dangerous because it makes it much easier to characterize almost anything as art. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what. Yeah. That's what makes things tough, though. That's why you have to, I think, create a um, set of standards that makes something art. What you really need to do is. That's what. <laughs> and that would be great art. You know, you can take a picture can you of cut it. that part out. I don't want take to take a picture of it. You know, <laughs> and uh, yeah, basically, that's that's how you go get to the utopia right there. Yeah. Start killing we're, we're still using code names, right? <laughs> <laughs> My real name hasn't been been said yet. Oh, I'm sure. So you guys would all agree that you, porn is an art. <laughs> yes. No, it's, yeah, it's, I not agree. Art. it's not art. I agree. Why? Okay. I'm just curious. I agree because I mean, going back to my gratuitous and communication argument, like it's it's just created for the pure you know pleasure for the pure entertainment. It's not. You know, there's no advancement of the well. There's, there's no, no well being argument. Not, right, and they're not communicating an idea or really an emotion. Yeah, through it. Very primitive. What if the idea is hey, to maybe objectify we say people? We maybe the solution is to not say. That it's not art as much to just say it's this primitive, horrifying thing that is designed to, um, what's the word? It's designed to, uh, debase. Not debase, but sort of rob us of what, um, makes us better than, you know, the animals around us. I completely agree with that. And uh, I, I brought up the whole porn thing because I think it's a good example of why the line drawn in the sand and why uh, not everything can just be art and why that can that's dangerous, having Wait, a mentality like that. You can that. say it's art. You can just say that it's destructive. Yeah, I, I, mean, I don't even think right I would now, say Right now, we're not hard, even so. saying that it's destructive. Right now, the, the cultural norm appears to be saying that porn is this uh, thing that's beneficial, that, according beneficial, to a lot yeah. of people. Yeah. Or people are neutral about it. They think, oh, it's just a freedom thing. You know, you should have the right to look at it. Things like as that. As it's not Whereas, used like a, in excess, usually the argument. If you right. look at Do most people serious, even make that killers, argument? What's the their journey start trauma How did, childhood like, this, this un, unraveling start and uh not and not even like with ted bundy he wasn't even abused as a child christian home it's for him it started with pornography and for a lot of them it starts that's with what he said yeah that's what he said he was also just a psychopath he he had some that was a narcissist circuitry in his brain that wasn't working properly of course, because like not just ninety nine point nine percent of people that look at porn aren't going to become serial killers. But yeah, <laughs> my point is, I mean, there are guys a big that watch horrible the videos animal. and they're like, "Hey, dude, watch this," and it's like some guy getting his head chopped off. And then other than that, you're like, well, "It's a normal guy, you know? He watches videos <laughs> of people getting their heads chopped off." <laughs> but I mean, he would never do that, you know. And there are people like that. True. That's like every high school male. <laughs> yeah. I think so I was to think of a few times where that was the case. <laughs> I think it also depends on how much you expose yourself to something like that as well. Yeah, I because with me personally, I'll watch stuff like that not for entertainment, but I feel it. Uh, it's me with the a certain darkness and evil in the world that not that i want to get to know but that i want to be aware of okay it's also why are you watching it too i'm sorry are i'm gonna have to stop you there George. Like cool we missed a very important word that you cut out we just heard it blink me with a very certain evil and darkness in the world so oh, I it mean... acquaints me oh okay a, a very <laughs> certain but not not in the sense of like oh i want to get to know this right, right. It, it makes me aware of it and that's why i think those things sometimes can be good to see and it's interesting I don't know. that back in, in back in the day back in the day like you know the 20th century um death oh, was kind of was a the lot 1900s <laughs> yeah 
Death was a lot more present in, say, the early early 20th or century. Present. Present. <laughs> present. <laughs> present. <laughs> that is what he said. I said present. We'll, like we'll a Christmas pull. present. Yeah, that 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 is a good point, Jay, and I think that's more of a uh, first world a phenomenon you see in first world countries because we have like nice police departments, fire departments, hospitals. Like you know, the average American citizen doesn't have to see death because there's yeah. people who are paid to take care of it. But in I think the majority of countries like death is that you see no, and yeah. have to deal with. That's very interesting. I was actually just watching a um a doc it was kind of, it's kind of a documentary. Um but they were talking about uh like medieval Germany, you know, where the werewolf legend of werewolves started. Um but they were they were kind of spinning it as, you know, people kind of create their own monsters in their head. But <clears throat> basically there was a story about this town and they were worried about like a werewolf, you know, because people were disappearing and dying and, you know, being found gruesomely murdered. And it turns out it was just like one of the guys living there in the town. Yeah. So what they did was, you know, they, as like his punishment and kind of a warning to everyone else around him as, you know, a symbol of like, you know, you can't get away with this. They, they publicly executed him in a very, very graphic manner. Mm -hmm. Um, But, but then what they kind of, you know, carried that into was, you know, back then that was a very, serious and symbolic way and you know people know like okay yeah this guy's being punished for you know something terrible and this is kind of like you know the kind of penalty that you get for that execution that's an interesting human behavior right right so then well they carried it upwards to france where they had their it was their final there was there was like a i guess there was a serial killer loose in paris and you know people became kind of enthralled with it right Mm -hmm. so when they announced that there was going to be a public execution i think this was the early 1900s like pe- million or like thousands, hundreds of tens of thousands of people, you know, all came out to try- watch this guy get his head cut off by a guillotine because they were just mm-hmm. curious. It was a spectacle. It was, you know, entertainment for the masses. And so that's when the French kind of realized, you know, this isn't serving the same purpose it was, um, where it's mm-hmm. kind of a warning to the masses or like, you know, symbolic. It's just yeah. people are here, here for the you know, entertainment. Right. It's a sport. Hmm. Yeah. France yeah, sucks. Uh, <laughs> well, well, I mean, <laughs> it's not because it's France, it's though. Not just France, exactly. <laughs> but that's no, uh, pretty that, good insight, yeah. I think. That is very interesting. It is. It has. I don't know why it is, but the more industrial we've become, death has become a bit of a spectacle, not just this yeah. thing. Oh that yeah, that, yeah, that goes back to art too. I think yeah. it's just because yeah. we're detached Fine. from it. Yeah, we're detached from it and it's glamorized and. Yeah. Movies, books, video games, it's... God, even like, back then, serious. they weren't that detached from it, you know? Mm-hmm. Well, like, the Roman they gladiators? Still... I, mean, yeah, I mean, I guess they didn't see people get their heads cut off, you know? Back yeah, and that's a good point with century. the gladiators, too, is that that was even a form of detaching yourself from it. Like, exactly, it yeah. became a sport. It wasn't... Yeah. It wasn't serious. So, like I said, like... With video games, I mean, I I love video games, but I think I mean that and gladiators is very far. But like, just how death has become a sport, I think you can see in both of them. I think it's different now, though, because it's not real. Yeah, that's what that's why I said the connection or the relationship between them is very far because with gladiators, people were actually dying. With well, you can argue games, that they aren't the even the person. same. Because I don't think the I, then there's been I'm sure there's been research done on this, but it, it, it I wonder if the if it does desensitize you to real death if you play Call of Duty. Oh, I, I don't think, think it, it does. I I would I'd be surprised if it doesn't. I okay. I've thought about like going hunting, mm-hmm. and I'm mm-hmm. terrified of shooting a deer and watching it thing. die. Mm. And I, I have played too. tons of Call of Duty. I I've been hunting. I I had to, I shot a rabbit and we went over and found it and it was still alive and so we had to just sit there and watch it like while it bled out. Oh, geez. was that awful? Yeah, it was a pretty terrible experience. Yes, I could shoot a rabbit. Made me a vegan. Yeah, 
<laughs> I didn't, it didn't quite have that drastic of an impact on me. The but. thing about a ra- rabbit is it's not a very complicated creature, you know? Here's yeah, the thing. If you have the ability... Self-aware, Jay. Are you kidding me? They see not, themselves no. in mirrors. They don't, they don't see themselves in mirrors. Right, but I mean, it was still kind of going back to our AI discussion. It's kind of like where you, you have sympathy on... You mean on the one stuff. that people aren't going to know what we talked about because it's going to yeah. get cut out? <laughs> don't cut it out. Just edit. There's there's gaps where you can edit. I think there were some areas where we did kind of close out and then started yeah. it back up. Let's we'll see the whole cast. For everyone to say that you're all stupid. <laughs> we don't have to scrap no. the whole thing. L- l- leave it in unedited and uncut. <laughs> yeah. I want to see <laughs> the meltdown be destroyed. that destroyed the podcast. <laughs> I do not want to <laughs> hear some of the things Jay Look said in public. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's a good yeah. Oh, not not on. not about the elephants and stuff, but some of the later things that had to do with possible threats towards people. Yes. Oh, Wait, what did what did Those Jordan say? I didn't, say, I didn't make a threat to anybody. <laughs> yes, you did. I, um, I, I also don't want to hear Jordan's I think it was comment. What did Jordan say? I didn't hear what Jordan said when Jeffrey was like, let's paint a, a uh, goose penis. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Ain't that's that something? That's gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah dude their corkscrews they fit perfect stop um oh <laughs> why? Goodness. why would you say that oh it's some what of the most complicated strange, biology man. out there dude um, Jordan, i think you're just but, being gratuitous right now yeah, yeah. we're yeah. actually amazed by the we're not, making, we're not making art anymore yeah <laughs> <laughs> to close this whole this whole topic up i think we all agree that like like there is a line to be drawn when it comes to to art forms, and uh, I think the best example of that uh, was pornography. And um, next week, I feel like we'll probably continue the discussion, but I feel like we sh- we've kind of closed this one out, and we can go on to a new topic. Yeah, before so, we I close agree. this out, I'm just a little bit curious about what take you thought me, Jeffrey, and Austin were gonna have. Because you were very pointedly saying, like, yeah, I think I'm going to agree with Jay on this one. What do you think? We're just, like, soulless monsters that have no morals? No, what? no. What he was, I'll tell you what he was doing when. He was siding with me because no one sides with me. Ever. Oh, I got you. Okay. And he was like, okay, I... this is something that Jay and I can agree on. <laughs> I got I you. guys would take you. the stance of if it's immoral in your opinion, you would say it's not art. Oh. oh. That's what I think. Oh, That's kind of emotionalism, surprised. though. What? You think we're overly emotional? That we just I let our... I can't believe you. I'm so mad at you right now. Yeah. You know, you're not a person, Jordan. That's how mad I am at you right now. <laughs> I mean, I don't know, though. I, I, I love I, it. I mean, you can edit this out if you want, but I do think it would be a good idea to just... We'll be editing <laughs> that out, Jay. I just want to... <laughs> <I just> wanna... <laughs> we'll be editing that out. Don't worry. All right, we'll double edit it out. Jordan tries to make it better. Jay's like, no, I'm doubling down. Whoa. Yeah. He's almost fell over. <laughs> Anyways. Oh, man, right, no. well, so next week, I feel like we should, because this was a pretty heavy topic, I think we should go for a lighter topic and uh, talk some sports. All so right. Sports ball. Let's go. Well, let's do man. Let's research right, guys, it, too. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Jordan, are you going to try and hash out a Tom Brady versus Aaron Rodgers debate with me? No, Is that no. What you want? I'm not that even going to be here goal. if you... So, I won't be here. <laughs> Come <laughs> on, man. That's okay, just... we, can have a, we can have a rotation of people. Oh, yeah, well, actually, if, they, if you measure the width of his bicep, it's actually bigger. <laughs> <laughs> All know, right, guys. On that note, Brady kisses his kids smack dab on the smack lips. on the mouth. That's <laughs> disgusting. Oh, Comparing these com- QBs, I mean, it's almost homoerotic the way you send, talk. Send him to guys. England. What a filthy European! I said. I wish I was his son so bad. <laughs> on that I note, do. I'd be freaking rich. <laughs> All right, All right. Let's let Austin wrap this up. On that note, thanks for tuning in. No matter what time zone you happen to be in. (laughs) Goodbye.